what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Ocean, this is Ocean's View. Here with little brother Devin Neps. Whoa. You gonna hear him in the, in the background. The homie, Willie Negro. What up? And the lovely Doc, Dr. Jana. And I don't, this, that's not a, like a cool nickname. She's actually a doctor. Like, she got a PhD in everything. So I don't want y'all looking at this being like, well, you just nickname it like, no, she has a paper. To, to back up the title and everything. I don't know how much surgery she can do, but we didn't know how much, we didn't know how much surgery Dr. King can do. We still call him Doc. So, that's that. So, I need you to introduce me everywhere we go, huh? Just come yeah. in the room, introduce me, I walk in, you're like... I'm well known. I'm well known for my introductions. I'm well known for my introductions. Like, people like how I bring them in and all that. So, I'm... I might be coming up to Steve Harvey's job in another yeah. two years. <laughs> I'll be, remember who? Remember me? Remember yes, because he had one hell of a season. But you see how we started off with my ideas in the background by the infamous, legendary Run DMC. So we only got. It's only right that we talk about Kanye. Let me tell you this: I inboxed Kanye on Instagram. <laughs> And the first hey, message, yo. first message, no, uh, I, I posted, you saw it, I posted yeah, it on I Facebook. Saw. I said, um, I said, I said, first of all, I messed up, I called him Kanye. Yeah. I don't know if that did, but, name. hold on, let me get the second part though. Right. So I said, Kanye, what's up? I would like to do an interview with you. I'm not editing shit because <laughs> it, um, they're saying that his, um, his interview on Drink Champs was deleted. I never saw it. I didn't see the interview. I'm seeing yeah. bits and pieces here and there. So most of the thing. thing. Mm-hmm. Hold up. So that's why I don't want you to talk about. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I saw bits and pieces of what people were talking about. I didn't really make anything from it mm-hmm. because um, I've kind of, I'm not going to say I've got my mind made up about Kanye. There's a few things that I do have my mind made up with him about. But, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really see it as anything extra. I just know he's the flavor of the month right now, mm-hmm. um, which is up his alley. That's how I feel. It's up his alley. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I'm still waiting to really hear what specifically he said that was so anti-Semitic. You won't. And you won't hear. The thing about it is, the thing about it is, somebody says the slur, and that's funny because I went on the doctor just for a second too. You um, when people talk. I noticed something happened the other day at my place of employment. And so it was a white white person that said, um, this kid said a slur. Now, I don't black people, we don't really say it's a slur until it's somebody white saying something about us. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm, I'm just being honest out there because there's a difference between a slur and somebody just cussing or somebody yeah. just being as an insult or whatever. Mm-hmm. But she was steadfast about it was a slur. So when I hear all these anti-Semitic slurs that Kanye spew towards Jewish people, and I'm sitting there looking like, okay, I'm thinking it's going to be something with more, with, with something more solid that you can wrap your brain around and be like, this is what he said, this is where he got in trouble. And I didn't really get it. So maybe y'all can fill me in on what some of the situation is kind of about. So what you're talking about as far as like the word versus the intention, right? So like I think a lot of times you have to think of it as are you intending to insult somebody? So me being queer, right? I date everybody that breathes. If you if you don't know. So basically, you know, it's one of those things of like I hear faggot all the time, I hear dyke all the time, I hear but if you came up to me, the same thing as bitch, the same thing with, you know, nigga, right? It's your intention behind it. So it's the whole thing with Kanye. I'm like, what's your attention behind? Like, you mm-hmm. weren't, you weren't coming after. That's with anybody, but not everybody thinks like me. And we're a very like sensitive culture right now. That's why I worry about a lot of the students and people that I come in contact that are black, because I'm like, it's gonna be one slip up where you're this amazing athlete, you have all these opportunities, and you say the wrong fucking thing, and you didn't mean it that way because in your culture, y'all be like, yo, you a faggy, real quick. Mm-hmm. And it just slips when you're having normal conversation. And now you have this situation where you're losing your scholarship, you're losing your livelihood, 
because of the fact you said this one thing. Mm-hmm. That's why I love being a teacher and a theater teacher at that, because you code switch. I'm like, you gotta learn how to put on a mask and wear it. Is it fair? No. But that's reality. Okay. I mean, he's a public figure. At the end of the day, I mean, Whoopi got in trouble for what she said that time, and they called her anti on that, right? Mm-hmm. On the view. And Whoopi's like one of the first to sing from it. But. That's well, Miss Goldberg. Well, get her last name. Right, That's her name is Goldberg. <laughs> she dates nothing but Whoopi. Well, that her last movies. name is Goldberg for a reason. She chose that. Yeah. For a reason, mm-hmm. and the same reason that uh, Ye was saying. And was he? Was his speech anti-Semitic? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because to insinuate a whole people, well, to insinuate Jews, uh, to stereotype them as people withholding something from other people is anti-Semitic, by definition. Mm-hmm. Uh, was he inaccurate? It's debatable. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, the, 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 the problem is he just says so much stuff at one time, so much dumb shit at one time. A typical Kanye way. Right. That, you know what I mean? That, that people take him, I think people take him too serious. Now, if you watch the Drink Champs interview, it will seem like he was trying to be canceled. 100%. He was going after Jewish people. Period. He was going after them. Like, he, sa- he was saying that he was going to get canceled. I don't really think that he thought Nori was going to air all that. He kept saying, yo, you might have to cut this. And they just put it out. They, they didn't edit. I think, or if they edited anything, they did a, stu- a poor job editing. Well, that's, that, that, that's gotta, that part's got to be inexcusable. Because... No, nah, because nah, if you watch the interview, they would have to edit the whole thing. It wouldn't but, be an interview. But that's... Okay, so that that's the thing. So if drink... I'm not here to criticize drink chips. What I'm saying is this. Their platform is too big for these kind of upset. Right now, wait a Before we got before we got on air, when I was talking about I sent the um, well, I did send it, but I sent it to yeah. Kanye and everything. He can come here and say all kinds of shit. And I'm not joking. We ain't editing nothing. Because our platform, it'll only explode us. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like that. That this it is what it is, and it's not about you because I have questions for him that I would ask. I feel right. that a lot of people never really ask. And I think that's one of our right. um, one of our goal marks for how we do our interviews up here and stuff. We do interviews. We're going to ask you the things that the streets really want to know that if people are afraid to ask. You know, like that. I'll give you an example. I would ask Kanye off top, are you crazy? And <laughs> no, and no. And what I mean by that is this. is like, it's not a, are you crazy? It's like, no. Yeah, are, you, are you, are you, are you, because my thing is the crazy are, are you really being logical or is this the reaction you're looking for? Because there are people out there that thinks, well, they just dismiss him. He's crazy. He's this, that, the third, such and such. You know, I've already, I'm on record saying, I believe he has ugly duckling syndrome. You see what I'm saying like that? I, I, th- I think he's sensational. I don't know he's that he's, he's, he's crazy. I think that he's sensational, meaning that every time he gets information, that he strongly believes it's the most important information in the world, and I have to shout it to the world, and I'm right, you wrong, I have more money, and you can't tell me so that... So you Yes, he's sensational, very sensational, yes. And I believe that he's learning things, and he's learned things over the year. He's privy to uh, a lot of information that a lot of people are not privy to, and some, some of his rhetoric is not well thought out and, and not well put together. Because because he's so sensational, he's just saying what he heard. But the thing about him being sensational, he's successful. So he gets the pass for a lot of BS. You see what I'm saying like that? Like, he'll say something. Everything you said is correct. He'll get sensational, this, that, and the third. But the thing that, one of the things that kills me is he's a throw a rock, hide your hand type person. Because why are you up here in less than a week? Now you're apologizing. Maybe a little more than a week. Like, my thing is this. 
Nobody, let me just put out there, nobody likes to apologize, honestly. Unless you really sincere, because when you sincerely feel sorry about something, nobody, you don't have to be coerced into an apology, right or wrong. So it's like, it just gets put out there. Him, all this, it's like the attention he's got from it, this is how I'm looking at it. Like, um, the attention he's got from it, that that's one thing. See, but a lot of people keep bringing up he's a billionaire, this, that, and the third. So he's not, he's a, um, so basically with the public eye, he's above reproach. This is why he really doesn't have anything solid around him in terms of people because he's so successful monetarily that anything he says, because like even you made, hold up, even though you just made mention of um, mm -hmm. he has information that we're not privy to. You know how I read that? He's in certain rooms that we'll never probably get into. Fair. And I yeah. get that. Fair. I get that. But you can, same, same thing we say about kids at times. I think this generation is so bombarded with information, they just don't know what to do with it. So when he's inside these rooms and us on the outside looking in, yo, if he's saying it, he would know he's in those rooms with those people. But yet he goes all the way out the window because now Sway is looking like a genius. Sway is looking like a genius. You know what I'm saying? And that's something because when Sway said, and Sway was so cool and he said, look here, you have the capital. This is why I was looking at that interview of Sir Raven because Sway was like, yo, I put my own clothes up together. But Sway was like, I don't have the money you have. So I spent hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. hard-earned money, not saying Kanye's is it, but I don't have your capital. And I tried it out. But if I had your money, why do I have to do it with these people? And you know what? Shout out to my man Ty Hill, Cards Face Up Podcast. I said before too, you don't know the level that he feels he needs to be accepted by the other people. Let me ask y'all real quick, because I know I've been talking for a second. Mm -hmm. Right now, whatever your passions are, and I want Dr. A for this one, whatever your passions are, somebody gives you $2 billion. I'm not talking about $2 billion um, in stocks. You got some money over there. $2 billion just dollars to do whatever you want Liquid. to do with it. Exactly. Thank you. Liquid. Liquid. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You have that. Who do you need to stamp you? Who do you need to back you? You may have asked. But what if nobody, to answer your question, Go ahead. but Go ahead. I think he bought into the the hip-hop culture stereotype. I think he bought into the money stamps me. You see what I'm saying? I think he feel, oh, I'm a billionaire, so that stamps me. That means I'm right, and you're wrong. Because in hip-hop, it's braggadocio. Whoever has the most money is winning. You see what I'm saying? Uh, these days, you see what I'm saying? It wasn't always like that. You know what I mean? Whoever was nice was winning back then. You know what I mean? Back when you can... Look at Kara's one. He got the same shirt that you got on your closet. You see what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, now it's designer this. Design, I, I was saying the other day, like, yo, I was telling you, like, I don't understand how kids go to college these days. Like, I was broke in college, so my Nikes got it done. Like, yo, they, you, you in college, is a broke college student, you got on a pair of $1,000 sneakers? That's weird to me. That's yeah, weird to you. get it now that we didn't have. But I will say this, why Why does it have to be that deep? I think people are making it so much deeper than it needs to be when it comes to Kanye. Why can't he just be a genius that has lost his fucking mind? Because in the end of the day, most people, if you look at the history of artists, yeah. they are people that are really talented are fucking bonkers. Look at Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Look at Prince. Go back and look at Aristotle and Sophocles. These are crazy yeah. people. Like People are just like, I think you have to... People are just made that way. If you're super, super talented, you're gonna be off your rocker just a little bit. It, it goes, and I don't think it's that it deep that people are making it. Like this is just a man that has mental health issues. One and two, he's just very, very, very talented, and he don't know what to do with it. It's all this built up energy where he's like, mm -hmm. I. And now he has the billions and the platform to just act. How many people are acting crazy like that in their house right now as we speak? Yeah, probably I'm, billions. He just got a platform to do it on. I'm acting crazy because I don't have two billion. That's that the, hard. Yeah. No, but so I'm saying. Yeah, but to, I'm just saying. To your ahead, point, though. Ahead. To your point, though. You know, uh, oh, always knows it. I, I, I say, the universe always, always should balance out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to your point, I think when you super 
talented over here, you may be lacking something yeah. over here. You know what I mean? So I, I, I kind of, I, I tend to lean that way, but I just don't want to be dismissive like that. Like I don't want to just say he's crazy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I, just I don't think, think he's crazy. crazy. I don't think he's crazy in that yeah. sense. There's levels to this. Yeah. yeah. Like there's very much a level of craziness that you can be, and he's sane in the sense of everyday life being yeah. sane. But when you get into that creative space, I've been there. Like yeah. when you get into, why do you think like the dude that played um the Joker? That's yeah. why he killed himself because he started going into that. He pleasure. Why, yeah, yeah. He's pleasure. You, you can't, you have to be very careful with your mind. Your mind yeah. is very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. And when you start going in that realm of like, I mean, this nigga went and stayed in a, a it wasn't in like the arena and yeah. shit overnight. Yeah. Like, you in, got in millions of oh, dollars. You could have been in the Yeah, he was living in the arena. Yeah, he lived in an arena. In the arena. Because he wanted to make music in the space. Spoke to him. Man, please, last night I slept in a hotel <laughs> lobby. <laughs> He just, he just wilding out. But on another level, but did write music but on the hotel lobby? Who, I said a few verses. Who, what, which one of y'all thought he wasn't going to apologize? No, but I already told you. I mean, he's I mean, a, he's a he, put it this, he's a, he's a, as my man just says, he's pop should apologize, nigga. But also, we just talked about the millions and the billions and the control. Yeah. He's watching his account go, ding, ding, ding. ding. Repeatedly, you can be crazy and not offend people. They, and, uh, white people like crazy people. They just don't like you to offend their <laughs> shit. When you start offending people, yeah. you start and the money comes from. Let's be real, Jewish people are a lot. Hollywood is ran by Jewish people and um, Middle Easterns. Well, if you want to be real, well, that's basically what got Yay canceled. Yeah, this is thing. the point. No, well, shit. If somebody's canceled Ocean's View already, I'm like, damn, I'm not even on y'all fucking radar. Right, right, right. Let me at least get. Can a brother make at least five hundred million before you cancel us? Right. So, so you know people, you know people killing them for their apology, and and people are killing them for canceling him, but not for what he said about George Floyd or any black people or black people in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I looked at the George Floyd comment. I was like, see, this is the dumb shit you be saying. Like, why would like? The reason why I didn't give it too much, too much legs is because I was like, "Yo, what are you, you just you know this man got killed with me for you to say his knee is not really on his neck. That you just making up stuff, right? You just saying stuff. That's exactly the example that I'm talking about. We look at that like, oh man, he just, but they look at the anti-Semitic stuff like, nah, he gotta go. He gotta go." Well, let me put a twist to that. I'm going to tell you why he's got to go. Because he's the example. He's high enough to be the example. You see what I'm saying? Like, you have to be somebody. First off, when I was getting all super deep with it, they castrated the real ones back in slavery time. They took the buck breaking. That was the thing. This is just another level of buck breaking. You know what? Because doing it, like I said, once again, Nobody's paying attention. We can say everything we want to right now. Or her podcast, my podcast right now, it might get into, put it this, we're hoping it gets into certain people's ears and views. But ain't nobody canceling us now. Let us be super successful. Yeah, Let people start following us. Right. Then it's like, whoa, we got to get rid of them. They didn't, it's the same with anything else. And it's, it's um, Malcolm and Martin. I'm just using them because they're the easy example. I think that's two different no, things. No, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this: when we control the masses, we gotta don't. get. But that's what I mean. Gotta go. This is why I don't look at go. it as buck breaking. Okay. Because it's not. We're talking about Jewish people, so they was the bottom of the barrel, right? right. And then, and then they. That's who. Oh, they. they well, well, they wasn't the bottom, white. Of them, but they was down amongst at the bottom. White. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Amongst whites. So, they they kind of. Or to like control everything, they not just gonna lose that. Right. You can't just say what you want, and and, and w without it going checked. Just like they check, they can. Like especially when you have that type of platform, you see what I'm saying. And that's rightfully so. They should check you. You see what I'm saying. And, and people are, people are killing. Oh man, see what happened. He was right. See they do run everything. See they taking his money. Yeah, they should. Because if I'm at the top and I'm running everything, why wouldn't I want to continue to run everything? And I blame us, really, because if you think about it, 
we should have checked Kanye a long time ago and stopped supporting Kanye if that's what, if he was talking about us that way. The only reason why he gets away with it when it comes to black people is because he's talking about black people as a black person. I think that because he, if a white person or somebody else said the shit that Kanye said and they were part, let Eminem come out and say some shit that Kanye said, um, Eminem would have been canceled in the black community. Like he, you, you know, what I mean? but I, I don't think, think he needs. Well, he community. said, but I mean, let's be real. He said shit about black people. I don't think he needs the black community. Well, Eminem he doesn't. Say he doesn't. But at the same time, nobody cares. But Kanye needs the white community. Well, we his endorsements are all with white big companies. We don't run anything. Exactly. That's why. So that that matters. It, but my thing is this. We, can, we can't cancel people if we don't run nothing. We can cancel we something. We can. But well, who did no, we cancel? No, listen. I'm, I agree with I you. I think this our is pretty canceled in the black people. Well, in my circle. No, no way. Well, I don't hear no no way. Our, every time R. I Kelly is in I jail. You R. Kelly is in jail. R. Kelly yeah. been... Uh, <laughs> R. Kelly been raping... <laughs> uh, R. Kelly been raping little girls for... Robert, you're not here for... For years and years and years... And people knew, and we knew, mm-hmm. and we ain't do nothing. We still was jamming. That's our age group, though, too. It's kind of sucks. We still was jamming because we don't run nothing. I'm gonna tell you what we do run though. What? And this is the this is gonna be sensational. I'll beat you up because it's kind of a backdoor way of saying trying to go against you just for yeah, the sake of it. Yeah. But you're right. <laughs> we're we're the commodity. All this shit that everybody's running. Yeah. Who's the people that's putting it into motion? Right. It's the black people that's the labor. But we haven't figured that out yet. That look here. We can write this. We go to the easiest thing, the NBA. I'm just calling it out and we can NFL, and we, got, we can name a lot of things. What would really happen if black people say, you know what? We're not the players. I'm not talking about one or two stars. Every single black person just shuts it down. Not these co- these companies will crumble. But the problem is, no, they will crumble. They throw money. They will crumble. Exactly. We are the biggest yeah, listen, guys, hold up. They're gonna throw they're money at it. They're gonna throw money at it, and then we've been we've been it's programmed, and course. we gotta y'all gotta take care of my family. And I'm talking about it would have to be when somebody asked me before. They said, mm-hmm. "How do you think racism or how do we get control?" <clears throat> I, I joke with it, but the only way I see it, did, you, did any of y'all see the book of Eli? Yeah, that's literally what, what would have to happen. Mm-hmm. That's literally like. Granted, I don't know if we'll even be around if that happens, but the whole thing is it this thing needs to start over literally from scratch. Because as long as the old values are here, it's gonna be another generation picking up the same thing. It's not it's a reason why these values and these ideals are still in motion because it's never stopped. Nothing in the world has ever changed. We're not talking about these small events that might be a ripple in the effect of the water of what society is. We talking about the only way for this shit to start all over completely is if this shit starts over completely. Like I, I, but I, but I, I, I disagree. I think it can change. I just think how uh, incremental. I mean, well, uh, it Let's incrementally scale, got here though. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to change overnight. Just scale of change, like what mm-hmm. is growth? Because a lot of people say that a lot of growth has happened. It has sit in this room. It has. has a lot of growth has happened. Like I'm not going to sit here and act like, 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 yo, we not better off than 400 years ago. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like in what? comparison. In comparison to what? To what you know. No, I'm agreeing. Right. But where it kind of goes to what she was saying, what she was just throwing out. Right. Okay. Clearly, we're better off than four hundred years ago. Yeah. But then, on the underlying scale, is it really different though? Aren't are they? Are they? Is it because they did it like that four hundred years ago? Because I always said if they could have put us in chains, they could have kept us in chains. And whips and stuff like that, they still would, but they can't. So now it's like, okay, we didn't gonna make you slaves that way. We got another way of doing it now, mm-hmm. and it's not as it's not as physical, it's not as brutal. Mm-hmm. You come to the form of this: your assistant principal, mm-hmm. you make what you make. I want that house now. Not a beautiful house now, but I want that house. Mm-hmm. Status, this, that, and the third. That person that's sitting across from that desk, nine out of ten, looks like the other side. And mm, he came in here, he got his Jordans on, he got this. There's no way this guy should make it. He's looking at your paperwork. You have mm-hmm. official paperwork. This guy doesn't look like he should be doing that. Mm-hmm. He must be in that neighborhood with black people and such and such. I'm sorry, you don't qualify. It's, 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 
They're going to find a way. And I'm not saying any white person is operating like that. But I was watching an episode of Law and Order, and it was about slave, not slavery, it was about just the differences of black and white. And the older guy who was the DA was talking to the assistant, the younger assist, assistant DA, and he told her, he was like, yo, because she was kind of saying like, well, black people are just, she was trying to make it so easy, the infamous, just say no. What's so hard about that? Mm -hmm. That um, what's her name? Uh, yeah. Nancy Reagan. Nancy Reagan. Yeah. Nancy uh, Reagan yeah. and stuff. And the guy who was white, he said, "Yo, we can't move that way." He says, "We as white people can move through life. Ninety-five percent of our life, we don't have to deal with black people." He right. said, "They can't do that." He said, "They can't succeed without dealing with us." So of course he has a different mindset. Right. So yeah. of course we're on pins and needles. When we're talking about right. we Jewish people and stuff game. like that. Tyler Perry, I want you to go, but I'm just trying to get it out. Yeah. Tyler Perry, people like to bring up. This is my thing. You know my favorite saying is, if I can, if I ask you for something and you can give me an example, that really shows me how little it is. You know right. what I'm saying? Like that. So when people be like, oh, well, we got a studio. Tyler Perry, look at him. Mm -hmm. And I love right. Tyler Perry for doing that. That shit ain't no dream works. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, this, like why ain't it? Because it's not. It's why? Not, because it doesn't have the money behind it. It doesn't. You know, well, dream, it's DreamWorks. That, and that's I'm the problem. That is, that, you, that is exactly the problem. Dream that is, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. The only two studios. I understand what you're saying. See what I'm saying? That is exactly the problem. Go ahead. That's DreamWorks to us, though. You see what I'm saying? That's the less value away from it. But what that's I'm that's DreamWorks about. to us. The, but the, the problem is we look at it like it's that ain't DreamWorks. Dream Okay. You see what I'm saying? And as long as we look at it as that's not DreamWorks, then it won't change. Then they, they'll continue to have the power. I get that. I get that. But I think I was saying it in terms when I said it's not DreamWorks, not to put it down. It's one of those, it's the money. Even though Tyler Perry is doing extremely well. But it's like, yo, we look at, we look at, let's just say it's 500 million. They working with seven, they working with eight, ten billion on this side. Okay. So it's like, how how do we get to that level? You see, I'm saying like that because we're doing great, but we're not doing that. We can't. It's like it almost feels like we're not moving the needle. That we are moving the needle. And what, what, what the problem is the the problem is when we when you say we're not, uh, it feels like we're not moving the needle. Problem is we don't acknowledge that we're moving the needle. So then we don't value ourselves at the same level as we value them. It's the same reason people don't grow their food and they'd rather go to the supermarket. It's a slave mentality. It is a slave mentality. Their stuff is better than our stuff. I have to go to master to get everything that I need. Just to contribute to the conversation, the last uh, Avenger films were shot at Tyler Perry's studio. Absolutely. Oh, no, well, yeah, because everything now, because Marvel is in Atlanta. Yeah. And I'm not knocking it, but that's where it's at. Shout out to my cousin, Dan Adams, who just landed and joined the Marvel. Yeah. So what? My, that, that, that's my point. You know what I mean? You. I think. I think y'all are talking about something. I don't know how y'all got here when y'all were talking about Kanye, but okay. Yeah, no, no, no. But um, I think <laughs> what Kanye does. Bring it, bring it, bring it back, the whole circle. Like what you're talking about is more of a systematic place, but you're also talking about an emotional, social, like the thing about why you can't compare black people to any other minority group is because we wear our skin. I can okay. go and I can be Jewish and no one will ever know That's when okay. I walk in a room. So when you talk about these things and you talk about like the mental capacity of us breaking down, we can't get there. It's because we can't get into the door first. We, we, we physically, but we do have to be proud of the things we have and support them, right? So it's the same. I mean, it I goes back to HBCUs, 100%. all that stuff. Like yes. we have to go... Like, we have to go, now we have to go to the federal government to get funding in order to stay open. Yep. But then we're getting, you got to play that dumb card where, okay, well, I I need them. It's the game. But I also want my own. It's the game, yeah. So where's that fine line of, like, where you cross over into, like, am I doing too much of needing them? Versus, because right. any big revolution, if you look at it, right. doesn't change until somebody else from another offset, right? Gay right. rights. It wasn't until like Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt were like, we're not getting married until gay people can get married. Right. And Will and Grace came out and look look at the civil rights movement. It wasn't until white boys that were up there in Princeton and Yale went down there to Alabama, was getting lynched and getting killed. And all of a sudden white people were like, oh my God, oh my God, wait a minute. 
we're killing our own. There's a problem. So I think some of that is yes, you're right. We need to. I'm on both sides of this fence. Mm-hmm. We need to support each other, and we need to build, and we don't need to always go look for it. It's probably right here in our face. Like I even sit there and look at all the people at Howard at, at homecoming, and I was just like, dang, we could build a school right here. We got principals, we got fucking CEOs, we got working for the federal government right here. We got the head of the board of trustees sitting right in front of our face. Like we could run a damn school. Right. I look at it like a job. I look at it like a job. Honestly, you, you go, you go to work, you you get your money, you get your money up. Get your money, save your money, and then you invest in yourself. Yeah. But so it's hard to do that. But the problem is, too, and this, right, exactly. and this could go a thousand ways. I won't let it, I won't let it, it, it exactly. leads to that. Problem is, we want, a lot of us want to feel accepted by that. Because that's, yeah. that, that's the stand for us. Yeah. Now we've made it. We even make jokes about that. Like, yo, man, even movies like Paid in Full. Man, white niggas don't got shit like that. Because that's what we're going on. It wasn't good enough that you have a nice vehicle. You see what I'm saying? That people just don't have. You like, yo, it's a step because, yo, look, I got something that even the whites don't have. That's why Tyler Perry got studio because he didn't buy into that mentality. He said, I, my, my people will support me. I can play the chilling circuits. I can do it. I'll, I'll make my money this way. And when I have my money, I'm going to do it this way. So I was looking at this. Um, I saw this stat online. Um, they said, um, Black woman, a black woman says she would rather date broke men because they are more loyal. Men with money are more disrespectful because their financial status says I care. Two things can be true. Both of those things are exactly what she said. Because the whole thing with the money, this is the part that kills me with the money thing with work. So now we have a woman here. We can get some, I don't want to say pushback, but some clarity. Or what some things are. For years, the, the biggest song ever of all time, J O B, whatever, I forgot her name because she just passed away. But I, anyway, that's that J O B, you want to be with me. Yeah. No finance, no romance. This should have been being said since the 80s, and I'm going for my generation and stuff, bills, but it's been happening. Before you got bills with the bills by um, Destiny's no Child, scrubs. no scrubs, just everything. Mm-hmm. This is the killer part to me. Huh? And as a woman, I gotta throw you under the fire. So when they say, come with the bills, you gotta pay this, you gotta have this. So when the dudes come with that, minus the consideration, minus mm-hmm. the respect that they talk to you with, minus anything else that's not tangible, why is it? A bad thing because everything you put out, you gotta have this, you gotta have that, you gotta come to me, correct, have your own. And when a dude was coming up, like, yeah, bitch, I drive, I got a house, I got cars, I got money, come over here, you should fuck with me. Oh, nah, you think you all that? Yeah, bitch, because that's what you said you wanted. This is what you <laughs> said. You said these are the things you wanted, so. I always say women do that. They don't know. They don't realize what kind of resume they put out there. Because that's what dudes, mm-hmm. as sim- like you said, how simple we are. You're right. Oh, you gotta have cars, you gotta have a home, you gotta have money. Is that a third? Okay, bet. Let me check that list off real quick. I got money. I got a crib. I got cars. I got some money in the bank. Da da da. Cool. You ain't talking about my sex game. You ain't talking about me talking to you. You ain't talking about just how I make you feel. You just yeah. said. These are the things that a guy has to have to get you. So now that I have those things, why are you still fronting and acting like I'm missing something? The floor is yours. <laughs> okay, so first off, we're going to talk about a woman versus a girl because that's mm-hmm. two totally different things. Oh. A girl is looking for someone who's going to give them money and all those materialistic things. A woman knows that there's a lot more that goes. Now, it doesn't make you comfortable, of course. You want him to come with a good credit score, of course. But at the end of the day, a real woman knows that that's, that's very third, fourth, fifth, secondary. Now, your dick gets smaller, will acceptable dick will get smaller the more money is in your bank account, yes. Mm. Because it's like, eh, maybe let's buy some toys and figure it out because you're gonna buy me a new car. Fuck yeah. Hmm. Fuck yeah. Now, if you don't got that kind of collateral, you better be slinging some good D. Yeah. It's, that's, it's, women are not as 
on cancer thing, it's usually like it's emotional, sexual, and financial. Those three categories. And if you're one that wants a child, I guess a provider and a father and a nurturer. So four categories, right? That's what most women talk about. Depending on the woman, depending on the situation, the more money, these go less. The more this, this gets better. Because you will have some women that are like, I just want a really dope as a father figure in my life because I never had that. So I don't care if he makes $100,000 a year. I want somebody that's going to be a good dad to my kid. Other people think differently. Me, I date women. So, and in the past, not recently, but in the past, I was the breadwinner. I was the one with the most money. I was the one paying for dinner. I was the one flying us to Mexico. So I know that side of being that. So I probably have a different perspective, and this is where I probably get canceled by most women, and they love to call me a pick me on my show. <laughs> and I agree with you. Like, a lot of times, I've never had a problem getting a date. And I don't think I'm the most beautiful thing in the world. I think I'm interesting to look at. And I think I'm people are curious about me. But I don't think I'm the hottest girl. Shit, you go both you go both ways. That's interesting enough. Well, I'm very flexible. And I'm very I'm very I'm flexible. flexible. I know what I But I mean at the end of the day, you know, it's one of those things where I tell a lot of my women friends that are single. This won't give you cancer, probably. It's your fault. I've never had a problem getting a man. That's very easy. I could literally walk to McDonald's right now and just be like, I want to fuck. I'm going to fuck in the next hour or two. This is what I've been trying to tell women for decades. They just when don't want to admit it. When, they, when, I be, when we be sitting up there saying, who can have sex anytime? Anytime. Anytime. And I'm I, like, not that I'm putting it out there that I've okay. tried it, but I've tried it. Because there was a period that I had, you know, I turned 40 and I was like, my fiance broke up with me and it was a woman and I was just like, fuck that, I'm gonna fuck every man that I fucking see. Cause I'm just kidding. And I was like, one night when she really fucked me over and my heart was broke, broke, I was like, I'm going to go to Outback. <laughs> mm. Sit at the motherfuck Outback Steakhouse. Shit, damn. And I'm gonna sit at the bar in a cute outfit like this. And the first dude that actually talks to me, I'm going to fuck him. And then I said, okay, so it was a whack ass dudes walking in the house. I picked the wrong fucking spot, right? Really. Because I'm just like, granddad came in, Uncle Peggy came in. Like, it was a whole bit. I'm crazy. glad you said that part. I want you to continue because, once again, when I was telling people about how a woman could go months without sex, but wow. then they have a point where they go out and they're like, you know what? You have a checklist. You have a checklist. Like, all right, the guy come in. Your checklist way. gets less if as he, the night goes if, on. If, if he looks a certain <laughs> way, if he talks his way a certain way, I'll give him some pussy. But I said a lot of times, dudes blow it. They don't know how close they were. The dudes that walked in out back that night had no idea. All he had to do was say, hey, how you doing? They're going to bomb me a drink. I was, that time I was thirsty. out, so I drank like Jose Cuevo straight. So literally, I was probably like half a bottle in. Mm-hmm. So I didn't care. I probably didn't even see what you look like at that, time, at that mm-hmm. point. So, I mean, like, but I think also women know if they're going to fuck you in the first five seconds of meeting you. Oh, that's very, why. That's why very I'm, aware, like, that's why and it may even. change with your swag. Because mm-hmm. there's something about, I'm going to tell you, this girl, going to school in New York, I didn't get it until I lived in New York. And I was like, these niggas are ugly and they would get, like, you getting ass. Because, mm-hmm. like, just the sweat, me being from Alabama mm-hmm. and being this country girl and growing up in the county and living this very privileged life, going to country clubs and being in Jack and Jill and like Debbie Tom Falls. I was not used to that grimy hood shit where it'd be like, yo, you. And I learned a lot of game from them too. Like, because of hanging out with them, I can pull, I can pull any bitch. I don't care what, if she can tell me that she is not gay, she gonna do something with me. Because I'm like a Barbie, I'm a girl's wet dream. Because if they're intimidate, like, you know, I have the masculinity of, like, my, I'm going to be like, you're so fucking hot. Mm-hmm. She's so cute. And girls just want to hear that they're beautiful. And that's where it goes back to full circle your question. You got to know what that woman wants to get her, right? Some women feed off of money, but others, it's affection. Especially women, like, in my age group, I would say I'm 43. Right now, we, especially if we've never been married before, we, that list has totally changed. If you see 
what my friends are like, I'm like, bitch, you would've wanted to like, I will only thank him if he makes this and, the, and now they think the garbage man who just treats them really, really, really good because if he can't, I'm not dating nobody that's not college educated. I've heard that a million times going to the schools that I've gone to in my life. Now they're like, I don't give a fuck what he does well, as long as he treats me good. Well, that's the point though. That, why do it take you to get to 40 something to just, it's society. To just be like, all right, I just want somebody who I can vibe with who treats me good. Because in that statement that, in that post that you made, it's kind of, kind of true. true. Like, true. a lot of dudes with money have a lot of options. And, you know, if you have a lot of options, people take advantage of that. They take advantage of the options, and you can be just well. Everybody's one using of the each other. You just gotta know that you're being used. Well, be right. That's a fact too. The thing but, with the money, I want you to deal with that real quick. I want to interject. See, the thing with the money thing is this: I personally don't. A lot of women, and I'm not saying all. Oh, let's just say a lot. A claim that they try to play this gold digger type role that they're not really cut out for anyway. No. Now, what I mean by that is this: some work you got. First do. off. The ones that really get to the bag, they professionals. They know how to get to the bag, mm -hmm. and they know who they're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? And the type of dudes and everything. Because there's a certain circles you got to be in. Mm -hmm. Now, in comes, I'm not going to say the guys like me, but, you know, there's other cats that's not okay, in those the circles. the guys like me. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. <laughs> so, so, my thing is this. Nah, it's on me, but I said, my thing is this. A lot of women get caught with guys that can give the impression that they have money. Oh, oh yeah. And they don't time. realize that to after the dude done skeeted in their face and did whatever. Mm. Because that's what it boils down to. That's the whole thing. Point this. I'm a non-drinker. I'm a non-drinker. Mm -hmm. My thing is this, though. When I go in the spots, I know a lot of, you know, a lot of cats. I, I've been left bottles. I've been given bottles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told you, ace of spade. I just like a bottle of looks. It's gold with a spade on it. Cool. I'm walking through the club, you know, looking like something. No, lady, you ladies ain't never tasted this ace of spade. I know you heard of it. Oh, yeah, I did hear about it. Drink up. And it's more where that comes from. Back in my mind, no. When this bottle one's dead, that's that. But by the time I done pour that bottle out, and I'm in your ear talking that shit or whatever, yeah, yeah, you know I'm outside. Blah, 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 blah. I understand the time limit. I got two days to fuck But that's shit. only because of the list. That's because Cause you them. know the list. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what they look for. And they are all looking for the same guy. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And I know the guy they're looking for. So it's easy to be like that guy. To act like I'm that guy. I act like, I got, yo, let me stand next to this car. This is my man car. Let me let me put on all my jewelry. Let me, let me hold this bottle up. And, you know, we dress nice. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, he must be that guy. And, like, I wasn't going to be as graphic as him and say you don't even find out until you skeeted on. But, you know, that's, that's, that was about that was pretty graphic. Skeeting. Why skeeting? <laughs> yeah, that was a gross that word. Was, that was pretty graphic. Wait, wait, skeeting is not the best word. <laughs> <laughs> But wait, you said something that really yeah. resonated with me just now, though. But the thing is, is that what you're talking about is starts from childhood on and has been around. Mm. It's the fairy tale, right? So we have been taught that we are princesses and our dream is for our Prince Charming to come and save us. It's just that the different lens now is your Prince Charming comes in the form of a Bugatti with a fucking bottle and he's taking you to his million dollar mansion and he's like, yo, I don't even care about these other hoes. I right. want you, boo. And I, and they even convince you that that's okay because what is all these hoes? Like, fuck that bitch. I don't care if he got no side hoes because so I'm the main bitch. They right. teach you this kind of style of living and you can't help so but that be chick that made that post is putting these chicks on game because the, the, the fact is that fairy tale is just that. A fairy tale. And when you get the guy with the Bugatti and all that stuff, it come along with a lot a of lot. other women. Just well, I'm here to tell is. you as somebody right before the pandemic that was dating and I'm going to 
looking for. Don't put his name out there. No, I'm not. I, I would never do that. Cool. He's, he's important. I was dating a very wealthy, and I'm not saying rich, but wealthy white man. And he was mm-hmm. the first white man I ever dated. Mm-hmm. First white man I even considered, but he had that swag because he was Jersey. Mm-hmm. And he was Italian. And he pulled up on me in Georgetown, and I was trying to figure out how to put, you know, they have the meters down with the cards, and I'm mm-hmm. like trying to figure I'm like, this shit ain't taking my car. And he was like, don't even worry about it, sweetie, I got you. And he put meter, he full, and he was like, and I was like, I can give you cash, like I can cash up you, like I got the money, like and he's like, nah, what you can do is sit down and have a drink with me, and I'm like, okay, I was about to go shopping, get a drink, mm-hmm. and so I wasn't even thinking anything of it, like, and then I started dating him. He lived in a penthouse, yes, like when I tell you, it feels uncomfortable sometimes because women know, it's like women are on the hunt for that, and I, being with other women, I never noticed it before that attention that you get from other women when you have a man that looks like he has wealth or they know that he has wealth. Because all of a sudden, other women, I'm like, yo, are they checking for me? Mm. I never felt like that. Or, yo, why is this waitress talking to him for so goddamn long? And why is she bending over in this skirt? It's like you almost, so it comes with an emotional thing too. We're Mm. talking about, you know, you're talking financial, you're talking sexual, but the emotional mind fuck on you is you're always trying to see, as a woman, you're like, there is another bitch that's gonna be cuter than me. There's another bitch that's gonna be smarter than me. There's another doctor. There's another bitch with tattoos. There's some like everything he thought was hot about me. There's another bitch just like me. And then the whole flaunting me in front of people, I didn't like that shit either. That's what you used to do. I love attention, yo. I love fucking attention. <laughs> like, give me all this. I'm an extrovert to the extremest extent. I thrive off that shit, and I don't apologize for it. But when you're used as a prop. It's very different than somebody appreciating you, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. No, nah, like, no, nah, I want you to go a little deeper than that, Steve, now because some women don't know the difference between the two. Because I've been yeah. curious about this whole, I've heard the term many of years, trophy woman. Now, and kept to me, trophy woman, kept woman is in the same gumbo. So if you said you thrive or you, or you, you like attention, you know what I'm saying, extra right, everything, I get it. But what made you feel uncomfortable about him using you as a prop? Because like it's different when that person wants to just spend like I put on, every day I look I put on a performance. That's I tell everybody you decide what you're gonna wear in the morning. That's your costume, right? So I'm very aware and I'm very conscious of what I look like. I'm very conscious of what people perceive when they see me. So when I would walk into a space, he would take me a lot of times to these big events with a lot of rich white people. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he would say is, this is Dr. Thompson. I don't ever lead with that. Like, Mm -hmm. but in certain social circles, you do have to drop that mic and be like, bitch, I'm a doctor because I have these tattoos. I look like this. So everybody always assumed that I'm like working out with makeup artists or hairdressers or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just your- Automatically went to some racial level. Right. But at the same time, I've had black men do that too, where it's, mm-hmm. I, I dated this guy that was the head of a fraternity. He mm-hmm. would only, he would never ask me out over his house or like to do intimate things. It was always like some event. Like I was always being taken to a gala mm-hmm. or a, and I am, I did that at good school. I was in pageants. Like I come from that world, but it doesn't feel like you appreciate me. You appreciate mm-hmm. the title. So you said he never invited you over to his house? Mm-hmm. Like I literally laid there like, Oh, you talking about the black guy that you dated? Yeah. Oh, he was Gary. Oh, the white guy always wanted to fuck me all the time. That was another thing. Is like the whole fan. He only dated white. I mean, he only dated black women mm-hmm. ever in his life, and he mm-hmm. grew up in a black. And then the reason why I actually broke up with him, we stopped talking. Y'all don't love this. Christopher Columbus Day. He was like, "You didn't wish me a happy Christopher Columbus," and I said, "I, I don't believe in that." <laughs> that was my answer. He was like, "That's disrespectful." I'm Italian. I'm like. Do you know the history of Christopher Columbus? Italians don't even fuck with like Christopher, fucking with me. Christopher yeah. Columbus. Fuck Christopher Columbus. And then he goes, well, my nigga's in Jersey. Oh. S- sir, your nigga's here. Oh. Oh, my boys be letting me talk like that. Oh. Right? I know. Okay. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> and here's the crazy shit. He actually FaceTimed one of these dudes. And they was talking like, he was like, I told you. He was like, I told you. He was like, he's, he's a white, I, they have, they call him white, whatever his name mm-hmm. is, you know what I mean? And they have a black friend that's called black, whatever, their friends, mm-hmm. you know, typical 90s dumb shit that we used to do back in the day, right? You get a label mm-hmm. to what you look like. Mm-hmm. And so, 
It's just one of those things where you're just like, is this real? This is real. But you said he's wealthy, right? He's very wealthy. Well, that's another and I did last why. a little bit longer than I probably would have if he wasn't That's not the reason why they probably mm-hmm. let him get away with them in bombs too. But he wasn't wealthy back then. No, that's that's wild. I don't mm-hmm. care. That was him that's growing wild. up in Jersey, with, yeah. and he lived on an all-black block, and he said he grew up like that. But I'm saying you get to a level of just know, knowing that's... you don't say that. You mean to tell me Bill Gates come in, okay, y'all doing y'all thing. I'm about to invest 300 million GR in here. You think this is good? And that's exactly what he said. 300 million? 300 million. You think this is good? That's all he said. You I looked at him dead in his motherfucking face and said, Yes, we are some good. You're the best nigga to all time. See, my thing was that, Are you rolling when you said that? Hey, yo. We don't even have to go there. We were like, Are you still rolling when you said that shit? Because we're about to make even more of that because, uh, look, you got that shit on tape. We're about to pull a easy out the bitch. We played the tape. Called us a bunch of niggas. I want to check. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely going to keep that tape as blackmail. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. He said, yeah. he said, he said, he said, he said we're the best niggas. I heard. It's all agreed. I'm like, yeah, we think anybody. Right? We think anybody. Think we were in shock. You know how that was the disclaimer? Yeah. I was in shock that I didn't know what to say. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. Right. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> 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 Said, nobody, nobody has ever accused me of not being an over actor. So, that's, that's it. But um, I was thinking to myself the other day. This is not even gonna lie. This let mm-hmm. thoughts just go around. Somebody said something on TV. They were talking about booty hours. I've always had an issue with that because I think a lot of first off, I like there's been a lot of trouble because of said booty hours right. and the difference between. What time something should go down or the assumptions that come along with it via a Mike Tyson, how he got caught up. Right, right, right. right. So, and I'm not just using Mike because my whole thing is this. When people, like mostly women, they'll say things like, just because I come to your house at three in the morning doesn't mean I won't have sex. And I'm sitting there, every single woman that has ever said that to me, I look at them like they're batshit crazy. Like, no, that is exactly what that means at 3 in the morning. And it's simple. It's nothing at 3 in the morning that you can do at my house that you can't do at yours. And all that is is sleep, if that's the case. You can cuddle. Yo, we can cuddle. 3 in the morning. After morning. We can cuddle with our our body parts. So if you call. Yeah, that's what I call sex. (laughs) (laughs) You know the girl back scoot, where you can scoot your butt back? That's how you tell a guy that you want it because you like scoot your butt and you keep moving closer, 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 closer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm in agreement with you, so again, canceled. <laughs> I'm going to be canceled again. You ain't going nowhere. Nobody's not going to let you want the D. That's just what it is. And honestly, you put yourself in a. Now, I'm not I'm not condoning rape culture or like if you say no in the moment and you're not, and you're uncomfortable, but it comes with a level of knowing that you're going to somebody's house at 3 in the morning with the expectation to fuck the end. 100%. What are we doing at 3 in the morning? It's 3 in the morning. There's We're fucking. The so the, my question is this. So does the time determine if it's a booty call or not? No, I've had afternoon delights. They're wonderful. This is what I'm trying, this is what I was trying to say too to a young lady I was talking to. I'm going to like, yo, me personally, no booty hours. If I call you, fuck and that's what I'm talking about. That's you gotta, what it but is. you gotta have the understanding between two people, right? So like, I'm very bold and upfront. So the dudes that I'm fucking know that we're fucking. So I don't have to be like, I think that's you know something that I have the privilege of as a woman too is to be able to call and be able to text him and be like, it's four in the afternoon and my pussy's wet. That's all I gotta text. Mm-hmm. Boom! You at my house? If you will make a way. You gonna make a way. It's At weird. four o'clock to come fuck me. It's weird because I'll call, I'll call chicks and 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 was like, hey, do you want comfort? But <laughs> that it. that doesn't necessarily mean Damn. it's going down. But every time they call me, it goes down. It, it goes down. down. Right. Every it don't matter if it's uh, ten o'clock in the morning, ten o'clock at night. 
2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock in the morning. Every time they call me, it just is what it is. But that's why I get frustrated women because they don't understand their power. We have so much power in these panties. Like, you, like... Not to go like real deep theater wise, but there's a whole, there's a strata is all about like women just not having sex anymore because the men kept fighting in war, so they just stop giving men sex and they all stop fighting because it's we you need you, us. You said a strata? What would you say? I think it's a strata. I think that's what it's called. Oh, I'll look it up for you. But I think it's a strata. Real, and then so that's the Greek play. That's what was. That's a downturn, right? <laughs> talk slow but I'm not so very educated so but again knowing the power of like yes you determine when you're gonna have sex you give off the signals of sex I'm very aware of what I look like right now and what signals I'm giving off he could tell you I dress like a freaking Disney character at school because I know I'm around teenage boys I had on a mini skirt and they thought they were, I had on a skirt that was like this short and I could I can't wear tops that are like this because they stand over me and look down my shirt. Mm-hmm. I'm very aware. So any woman that is telling you, oh, I didn't know what I was, you're fucking lying. We know, unless you're a dumbass, you know what kind of attention. Now, should they touch you? No. Should you be able to wear whatever you want to wear? Absolutely. I should be able to walk down the street, my titties out, and you should not touch me. But And you should be able to be not tempted by it because in most cultures, that a titty is a breast. Right. Like it's only in America that we've made it sexualized, right? I like titties. I like titties too. They're great. They're cool. No, I I'm a titties girl. Like, cause I don't have titties. I like I have big ass, but like titties are my shit. Like, love those big ass titties. So, but I don't know how we got there. But <laughs> you went. <there. laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not see what you blame that on. Are you always be going down my fantasy lane right here. We're not supposed to talk. You started talking about titties. I get sidetracked. That's when that you started talking in. about titties. I, mean, I just said booty hours. You brought up titty hours. There's titty hours and Oh, but hours. speaking of booty, if I if I call you at three o'clock in the morning, you should know what I'm calling you for. Right. Exactly. And I'm gonna say, hey, come over, or I'm coming over. Oh, what and you doing? what you doing? Is the, what you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, what you doing? No, when y'all ask me, when the women, when y'all ask what you doing, I could be dead to the world. But by the time you ask me what I'm doing, well, I'm just sitting there just chilling. What's up, though? Like, that's how I do. Like, what's up, though? Like, um, you ain't just called me just to see how I was doing. I'm clearly home safe, so what's up? You know, I'm just thinking about you. What about you? Every question is getting under the microscope. So what were you thinking? Right. Okay, what's the furthest since you like, or what's the furthest you ever gone for, for the D? I've driven, I've driven at I would say one o'clock to like Manassas, Virginia. Okay. See, that's two different things. I'm a frequent flyer, Miley Beer. So like, I, I've, I've, I've flown that. to Jamaica for some day. Like, like spur like in a uh, forty eight hours. Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he flew me no. out. Oh, you got flew out. But I knew what I was flying mm-hmm. for. That goes back to the. I would you know, be so. like the women when they say, "Oh." I don't have to have sex with him. He's taking me to Paris, but I'm not going to have sex with him. Bitch, what, what? are you going to Paris for? We ain't up. staying in no... I wish a bitch would. If I take you on a trip somewhere and you don't have sex with me the whole time we're on vacation, you are paying me back my motherfucking money. Because there was a purpose for you, and you didn't fulfill that purpose. This trip is free because you're giving me pussy. But they'll tell you that you should have made that purpose clear before... And that's where I fought men. Because I feel like sometimes... Y'all think that you're not going to get it by the telling the truth, but sometimes that truth would have saved you a whole bunch of headaches. Yeah, but there's another bitch that would. But that's crazy, though. So let me get this straight. Okay, I get it. There's a level of culpability on the men, but I just don't see me saying, all right, well, you know, I'm about to go book these tickets um, just so we're both on the same page. Um, <laughs> you know, because I, I don't want any, anything missing in school. We're going to have sex when we get that's to That's how settle. I even say it. Though. Exactly. That's the whole thing. I'm being, I'm being facetious with it, but this, that's my point. I don't even know how to even bring that up because I got in you. my mind, I'm looking like, you got to know that if I'm swiping this card, you have one job to do other than look good. Two, that's we're going to have a good time. Like you said, you open up the door. The sex is part of the good time. It's the package. It's the package. 
We're going to go to whatever this island we're is or fight, state, we're whatever. Gonna, we're going to eat, we're, we're going to dance, we're going to party. And it has to conclude. So that's that. So I'm with, I'm with you. How do you just. I got how you. Do you make, let us know. How do you make it? I got you. Let us know. First off, it's, it's not about what you say, it's the context cues in which you drop. So before we even book in that trip, we're having sexual conversations. I already know you about that life. I'm not jumping in this. I'm not bringing the bitch that's, I got to talk all this shit to take her to church and shit. I'm bringing the bitch on the trip that I know is a down ass bitch that's going to have a good ass time, right? Why would you bring a lame on a vacation? That's one. So you already know from jump, if you're inviting them, what you're expecting. And they should be, you've already had that experience with them that they were cool. This ain't, mm-hmm. you don't go on trips for the first time with somebody you just met, right? So you kind of know. Depending on bracket you're in, but go ahead. Yeah, so you kind of already know. Through. But then you do the little, like, for example, I can tell you when I took a bitch to, like, Mexico. Bomb-ass Panamanian bitch. Like, I, I have a thing for Hispanic black girls. Like, Afro-Latinas, I was in heaven in New York. Like, it was just, they blow my mind. There's a whole bunch of It's just the way they talk to me and they can cuss me out and I let that shit ride. So, mm. but... I say, oh, I say, I brought her, I, we never was intimate, but I wanted her to go with me, and I was like, she's so fucking hot, like, I don't even care, but then I was like, I brought you a present, and so I, this is me, I can get away with this shit, y'all gotta do it in a different way, I brought her some, like, sexy ass lingerie, where else you think you fucking wearing this lingerie to, bitch, we're going on a trip together, it was expensive as shit, too, so she's like, you got me a pearl, like, what, I'm like, don't even put it on right now, I want you to model that when we go to Mexico. Bitch, I'm giving you lingerie. You know what I mean? So, and then, or you do the sexy text talk. You know what I mean? I can't wait to get to Mexico to, like, lay down with you, hold you. You know, you and then you build up to the, like, that whole sexual conversation text thing is building up that energy so when you go on vacation, right, you both are built up to do it. It's hot. But ain't that with somebody that you haven't been intimate with? I think I even do that with people I haven't been intimate with, like, I'm texting you. I'm just a different type of chick, though, because I'm texting you during the day. I'll be on my phone like, um, let me make sure that I say something sexy to this nigga right now because I want dick on Friday. I just think it's weird to get thrown out anywhere and just not have sex. It's that's crazy funny. to me. That's weird. I don't think it's I think it's crazy to think that you're going to somebody's house at 3 o'clock in the morning it's and weird. not fuck. It's very weird. It just doesn't I mean, that sense. goes back to your point, right? Is there hours? I think there's hours, but I also think that there's situations. Yes, there. there's hours. If I, if there's if, definitely hours. If I call you at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know exactly what I'm calling. I you say 12.30, the clock's changing. 12.30, that's that's that miss mark. Once after 1.30, 1.45, and in our age range, we oh, go back down to 11, 10 maybe, because it depends on if I got a school night. You better say 9.35. Anything over 9.30, <laughs> you may get fucked. Because I gotta go to work in the morning. My thing is this: if you go out to the spot or anything you're doing, happy hour stuff like that, and you call, well, I just came. Those are contest food for me. Mm-hmm. You come, you come out of brunch. You went to you went to happy hour. Yeah, that's nothing. My girls leave at happy hour. Oh, you been drinking all. What are you doing? Shit, shit. Now that you've been drinking, nothing. You, gotta you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you been doing nothing. You might as well come off and get it off. Things like that. Yeah. But. Yes, I do believe guys could be more upfront with things, but I think a lot of times things get lost in the verbiage because it's like. But the uh, but the other thing. What is he this, wants to say? Every every chick that ever told me they that they was coming over and we wasn't going to do something, we did. That's the phrase I look for. But then they got to play the game. They got to the chase, right? It's, it's the tough. chase. It's tough playing the game these days. But also the girls that give it, we've been taught as women that girls that give it up easy thing. get the last stick, right? They yeah. literally like. If you are that easy girl, nobody's going to wipe you down. Nobody's going to respect you. So it's these mentality, even like home, perfect example, homecoming. This is 20 years later and still the bitches that were out there, they could be saved, they could be church women, it only matter. They are still known as the hoe from campus. Uh, remember when that bitch was sucking dick in the fucking da 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 And that was when she was 18, not bitches 45. So that mentality of you saying that, it's, it's also a image thing. Right. Like, Okay, well, just I can three o'clock. I'm go- I can't show you that I'm a slut. I have to show you I'm a good girl first. I'm not gonna do it. Oh my God, you touched me there. So now my clothes must come off. Well, just because I called you and you came over, doesn't mean that you're not a good girl 
or we something. We know like that. you know that, but they don't know that, and society has made it so that we can't talk. Right now, uh, there's a whole bunch of women that would listen to me talk right now and be like, "She's a slut. She's a hoe." They just took this one clip and they just watched it. They would peg me just on image alone that I'm all these different things. We are all prejudiced. We cannot help it. It's a human characteristic. You see something, you're gonna judge it. So that just plays into the psyche of the whole game, right? I gotta make you chase me so that I don't feel like a slut. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with, I feel that I came over your house at three o'clock in the morning to feel more respected about this decision. Let me play like, oh no, don't touch me. Oh no, well now I have to give in because oh, he touched that spot. It was just, I got so hot and bothered that I had to do it. No, my thing is this. I've run into a lot of situations where women have, not a whole lot, like a handful of situations where women overthink what I'm thinking. All the time. And stop being like, oh, you're not going to respect me. I'm like, shh, I show up. I'm definitely, (laughs) definitely definitely going to respect you. first night and she literally called me in the morning and I went over there and got crazy and I was like I hate you pussy was like wet. no yeah, I don't wet. like you anymore like what is this well her pussy was wet all night thinking about why did I make that decision that's why she called you in the morning because that well, was one of those I, like I, I damn felt, I fucked up let me get well, let me was, get right back I felt like she was stupid and, but here's the thing that women fail to realize it's all about how you do it and not like at this age I don't give a fuck right but my girls got on me this weekend when I was out they were like you keep fucking disappearing and I was like cause no nigga is gonna talk to me if y'all are always around get the fuck away from me like y'all are all married and you got fucking husbands and fucking kids at home I want fucking dick and I want pussy like get the fuck away from me and they were like you're so rude and I was like no y'all have been married for 15 years this is not how this works you cannot and like most of my friends are guys straight men my one friend, he was like trying to like he. People are very affectionate with me, and I love it. Like I love hugs. I love being touched. That's my love language. So like it's nothing for my straight male friends. They're married to hug me and like you know kiss on me or kiss my shoulder or something. Like they do that. Like I squeeze you all the time and hug you. Like, Whoa! What? Just, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I hug everybody. I squeeze all of you Whoa, on here. Shit. I hug Whoa. everybody. Whoa. Like when you're affectionate, like that. Greg, you can't. You know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, Edit that part out. So, but you know, it's it's one of those things where you don't you don't want that image. So going back to the whole like saying it's the second night, it goes back to the same thing I was just saying about image. Like they don't want to be, they don't want to feel like hoes themselves. So the second day makes you feel a little bit better. Now I don't claim that because I waited so long to have sex that when I started having sex. It was with one person, and then I started having sex with another. I was a serial monogamous. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up being, like, at the end, I was just like, fuck it. What, what am, I held on to this virginity for what again? For, I, to say that you did. Right. I say missed a did. lot of fucking good sex. Or maybe some bad sex, no too. Bad one. But, like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm thinking about all, like, even sitting at homecoming and sitting there like, damn, I could have sex here, here, here. I could have did this, this. And you're seeing people that you had maybe crushes on you like damn you just don't give a fuck at 40 like i don't that's why when people say things like younger men are checking for older women now more than ever because we are bad bitches like 
and the older women now, our generation of 40-year-old is very different than our mom's generation of 40-year-old and very different than our grandma's 40-year-old. You got to think the Golden Girls were like fucking 50 years old. Girl. Hell no, they were like 60. All of them were getting SSI checks. <laughs> <laughs> and the freakiest one was, um, Blanche. 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 Hey, yes. yeah. boys love me because the, I don't come with bullshit, right? Just going back to that whole... Out back? Out back has a special place in my heart, right? <laughs> shit. Because I got outed at out back. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it took only 30 minutes. I didn't, end up sleep- did. I didn't end up sleeping with him because honestly, it goes back to you. Like you just said that you got turned off. I got turned off because, wait a minute. Is there something wrong with you? Do you have an STD? Why are you trying to do this so fast? This is, I'm like, oh, so you, God, you hold fucking on. it up. So you're telling me, you're telling me, he blew it. He blew it. Yeah. Exactly. And this I was is, over it. That's I was like, the thing. He was I'm, thinking too hard. He was just like going into this whole thing of like, oh, do you have a husband? That's so the accident. Like, why would you? He just kept. He couldn't take that. I was just like, I want to fuck well, right me. now. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So he blew it. He blew it, and I'm pretty sure other guys have blown it too. This is the thing he was talking about all the time. It go, To me, it goes to, it talks to the person that's asking all these questions. Mm-hmm. I think the last time I had that thought, I ain't gonna lie, I probably was 20. And it wasn't until my first one night stand where the woman controlled everything that went on. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about, excuse me, the act, but just how, you know, we go into a hotel. We gonna do this. We gonna do that. She pretty much controlled. She was like thirty or yeah. something like that. And I make no qualms. She clearly controlled the room. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I would win. But when it first happens, you looking like this is luck. Maybe just That's what happened. Yeah. This is luck. But then I was with older cats that was like, nah. She wanted to do it, so she took she took control of it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say, be honest. By 23, 24, I understood, not to say that I can make it happen anytime, but I understood how to position myself for it to no longer be luck. But more like, if I put myself in this position, I may be able to I can, I, I can, you know what I'm saying? And by I, 30, you was Bill Bellamy. Oh, <laughs> Willing suspension of disbelief because I was like, it's a Bill Bell. <laughs> no, no shade to Bill Bell. Only if you want to pick me up and Bill Bell. Nah, because it's what you <laughs> but, like. Because the problem is, we talk about all the time off camera, dudes don't. It's funny how a dude that think he's the shit when he's talking to other dudes and everybody mm-hmm. else, but then to get around a woman that's liberated a certain way, especially sexually, oh, it gotta be. Oh, they start thinking, yo, she do that with everybody. Yes. I don't believe that. And yes. I do believe there's a, a percentage of women that you could be like, shit, this could have been anybody. But there's been but too many times that I'm like, you. Nah, I still chose you. she chose me. Yeah. She chose me. She saw what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, remember in, um, y'all seen Hall of Nights? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy said it too, but, but it skipped all our people's head when he was like, yo, Sugar clearly told him, don't mess with that chick because she messed with that's um, Bugsy Galloway. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. his girl or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So she sent the joint saying, yo, I, I saw the electric connection between us. And he was like, Sugar was like, yo, I told you don't mess with her. He said, nah, she probably saw me on the boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was yeah. his whole thing. He was like, nah, like, this ain't got nothing to do with him. She, he basically was right. like, and I would turn... He was like, first off, he said she saw me on the boulevard at the picture right. show, which is technically the movie. Because that's the right. right there. But it's the same thing. He was like, nah. And, and that part always resonated with me because it's funny besides that. But it's like, we only seen in Harlem Nights um, quick with, with Sugar yeah. in business joints. But they not close in age. So this nigga has a whole, like, he, after um, Sugar and them go about their business, he out, he got Rolls Royce. He's driving, he's still like 20, so he's hanging out with people that they don't even mention, 
But that's what he put out there. He said, no. Nah. Why else would he be on the boulevard? Sugar Mill ain't up there. Yeah. He's out there. So he's like, nah. She seen me with my shit. They know I got the club. That's why she wanted to mess with me. Like, hey, but dudes don't be built like that. Dudes act built like that in front of other dudes. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to women, that'll be liberated. Like, first off, if you got to go to a woman talk about, you must got something. Why, if you really believe that, why are you still entertaining her? Why? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, why it's like you you're trying saying? to catch me in a lot. It's almost like the game of it all, right? Like, why Why are we even having this conversation? Nah, he was just just dead nutty, it. man. It just was too good it. to be true for him. Yeah, I think it's got caught up. Yep. Too good to be true. This can't be happening. This can't be happening right. to me. Not to me. Not to me. Because my thing is, you were with it in the car. And then, like, all of a sudden, it gets, like, we're on our way to do it. And you're like, I mean, my thing was, we got to stop and get some condoms and blah, 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 because I didn't come prepared for this, so I wasn't thinking. You know, like, I'm just, I'm trying to be proactive. I, next thing I come out with condoms. That was a problem, too, by the way. Me, well, me initiating to go get the condoms was, when he's, it was demasculated. Is that the word I'm looking for? Come on. I'm happy. It's demasculated. Is that right? Is that Look, the word? man. You the doctor. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's after hours. I'm just with Jay right now. I'm just with Jay at night. I'm not, I'm not a doctor at night. But, yeah, so he told me that, he was like, that's a man. Like, how are you going to just walk up in 7-Eleven? He's like, see, you must be like, I can't. I'm like, you're talking too much. I need you to say less, shut up, lay down, pull the dick out, get hard. Let me do this so I can hurt. My pain is in my heart. I'm just trying to fuck the pain out. Like, this dude was black? Black dude. And he was just like, it was just like question after question. I'm like, you're asking too many questions. And I get it in this time and day and age. We do have to be careful. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we have this societal thought that women cannot be sexual. Women cannot go out there and want dick. Women cannot be the one that initiate that without some kind of like I know could. dinner or something or something. <laughs> I know y'all could. Y'all are not fooling me. <laughs> no, no. I know exactly Look, what y'all are I know more I know about. more women that are doing dirty shit than men. And you can't name them. Never. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I bet you can't name them. Yes. <laughs> I bet you can't. You know why people tell me shit? Because I'm like Fort Knox. Uh, That's why I, I do a lot of my dirt. Like people always come up and they're like, why do you go on vacation by yourself? Why do you hang out by yourself? Why do you because there's no evidence. If I wanted to walk, New Orleans had the time of my life for my 40. I'm so much so, and I got ratted out by the cleaning lady to my mom, and she was like, oh, she's just getting in it for him. I'm like, bitch, mind your business. How the cleaning lady lose your mom? Because we were having, every morning we oh, have breakfast. Oh, okay. So my mom's only real rule during New Orleans, and then the pandemic happened actually a month after that, so it was perfect, like, time to part, party. But, like, I partied, I partied. My mom's only rule was, you have to have breakfast with me every day. And she's like, I'm going to New Orleans with you to make sure you don't end up in jail. So sure. I was like, okay. And so me and my best friend at the time, him and I are not friends mainly because of New Orleans. Because <laughs> my ass was dipping off for real. And he was looking for me and mm. was pissed. Why don't y'all just best friends though? Why would you piss? Because like, you was best friends looking for me and I'm in a car. Hold up, so y'all was, I don't care about that on camera. But what you going on? <laughs> y'all were y'all were best friends that just were friends, or y'all was best friends that every now and then. No, no, no. We um, so he would never admit it, but I think he's completely gay. But he's bisexual, and then since he's I'm that's completely gay. But completely gay. Okay. Yo, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It doesn't mean no, because if you're thinking it hard to go in a vagina, then it doesn't mean you're completely gay. Well, you, know you gotta I mean? understand, to straight men, if you can have sex with a man, it doesn't mean you're taking it. You get, but it doesn't mean you're taking it. Take it, if, if you give him, take it. If you have sex with but, a man, you get. I don't get. I mean, that's a very that. heterosexual way of thinking of it, but like, and that's the only way I can think. But yeah. there's lines again. There's levels to it, yeah. right? Because if you go back to if you're into psychology, there's a line. Mm -hmm. No one is. They say it's like very low percent of people are totally straight. No people are totally gay. Everybody is from like a three to an eight, right? And you're all mixed in between. Because if you're totally, you never ever can be like, oh, he's an attractive man. Bullshit. Every man can see an ugly man from a, I don't care how straight you are. You know the difference between an attractive man 
and I, it's ugly ass. I, I, no, I, I only think of why I gotta agree with her with that. Not in terms of the spectrum. It doesn't be sexual. But I'm saying is that because it is, it's, and, I, and I had to come to that realization, and I was like, okay, nothing gay, but it was like, it's the same way you can call a nigga, like, this nigga's ugly. Yeah. Right? The same way you said that, now the difference is, as you can do one, he likes to use oof. I'm not going to say with some oof. Right. Now that nigga, like, this nigga's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 That's no. a good looking nigga. No. That nigga no. is beautiful. <laughs> That's how you will. No. You know, like hey, Jamie Foxx when he was talking hey, about Prince? Yo, when did Jamie Foxx when he was talking about Prince and he was like, no. <laughs>
we know I can come in there with sweatpants and a t-shirt and say I'm gonna give you some pussy. It's gonna be the same thing if I came in this outfit, right? right. So, it, but a woman's perception of me—that's why I love women so much and I'm attracted to them—is because they look at the whole thing. They like me because of the whole thing that I'm given. They appreciate me from my nails to my hair. Whereas the guys are like, I don't need any of that shit. Take that shit off. A lot of guys are like that. This is intimidating. So yeah, ask you this though, because you did say one thing that I believe. I, I, I'm not gonna say believe and tell the truth because it's your truth. But when y'all say y'all dress for women, I get that part. I don't need that part explained. So if you go out, I can't say you because. So try to try to answer for like a, a straight girl. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you go know. out and you mean to tell me you got on your shit and not one guy. Gives you a compliment on it, you don't feel a little weight that night. I was see, it's what do you different. What the average woman would think? The if average one woman, guy doesn't even say. But oh, women do go without night. a guy hitting on them. That's not hitting on you, but you say you look nice not hitting on you. But women don't. There's a lot of women that they never get that. I have a lot of associates that never get that. Probably for good reason. <laughs> I mean, it could be true, though. I mean, it's whatever. Again, it's an image you're selling, right? Yeah. Like, I can walk out. I know that my tattoos bring a certain level of attention. When well, I'm in Baltimore and I walk a, outside, I can walk outside literally in a white t-shirt with, type, with some with sweat tattoos. jeans, right? Yeah. I walk out, I'm getting every hood nigga on Baltimore Street, and I'm like, there's literally ass walking past you, and I'm in sweatpants, and they like, yo... I don't care. Look at her. Like, come here, my. Like, you know what I mean? This you know why? Because the porno chicks have tattoos. That's so funny because when I was in the Dominican Republic, I thought I was hot shit and I found out that they thought I was a prostitute because of my tattoos. <laughs> Yo. Yep. And I was like, really disappointed because I really thought I was hot shit. And then the guy was like, they think you're a prostitute. And I was like, oh, there you go, man. Yeah. That's, just like, that's just like the person that wears glasses is supposed to be smart and all that stuff. But there's a stigma that goes Yeah, it's so stigma. Like, that, that's how that's how that part goes with that. But in terms of like for me, mm-hmm. I've left spots because I didn't get a certain amount of attention just yet. And it happened to. a lot. I, I look at like what I'm like. This bitch see what I got on? They ain't not recognizing what's happening over here. <laughs> this is what I'm saying in my head. It's like that. I I matter of fact, we was hanging out one time. He was at Miss me and Negro, and he was at Miss and um. He was dancing with somebody else when I was working. So I was dancing. I came behind him, which I never even just go behind chicks. I know if you grab your hand and turn them around. I want them to see me first. But this particular time, I walked behind them. See, he's a walk behind me. That's why he's the master. <laughs> 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 so are you a walk behind? Are you a walk behind? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lights come on and they're like, hey. So, so I go like this. So I'm dancing with this chick. If you might remember, we're doing some dancing. And I, can, I can't hear what's being said. But the friend is facing me. She's facing this way. So clearly she asked, how does he, he look? look? That's our go-to. And so I didn't like, you like this. I didn't yeah. like the response. The chick said. She was like, Tore your ego up. She went like, ah! no, 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 no. no, but the chick that was dancing for yes. was dancing. Bam, 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 she said this. Bam. I said, yo, I stopped. I turned her around. I said, don't do that. I was like, I don't know what your friend is talking That's about, how old I said, I don't know what she's talking about, but I said, I am clearly top 10 in this club. <laughs> like that. This nigga bust out laughing. Yeah, that shit was I'm hilarious. Like, I was like, I am clearly top 10 in here. I said, matter of fact, you don't even need to dance with me no more. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I said, go ahead. I said, you done lost me. You but done, you know it's you, not you lost the best thing ever happened to you. You done lost They're, me. Uh, you done what? lost the best thing ever happened to you. <laughs> Yo. The funny thing is, she probably walked away panties wet because that doesn't happen often. So that level of masculine, like, the thing that I love about women is the opposite thing I love about men. Like, that whole dominate, because I am an alpha girl, and I, I'm a boss bitch, and I'm always, I don't want to be a boss at home. I want you to take me, throw me, and put, like, I want all that shit. You want the movie set. This open no, it's not even that. Just, like, you know, you know what's hot for me? Build, put together my Ikea furniture. I'm wet. Have you? you know my Starbucks order. You know my Starbucks order, or you take me to Starbucks in the morning. Like, it's those type of things that are sexy to me. Like, you want to, like, women is the femininity, men is the masculinity. I want to 
feel like I'm protected. Like, I remember, I'll never forget, like, I don't know why I was so attracted to this dude, because he had, like, a house full of guns, and I'm like, he could kill me at any second. But it was something about, like, he laid a gun on my lap, and I, like, immediately was wet. Like, I don't know what it was. It was, like, the power of, like, him being, like, if anybody rolls up in this bitch, I got you. And on that note, <laughs> got plenty of guns and Starbucks to go around. So, <laughs> this, this was another great episode. Ocean's View. Dr. Jenna, she'll definitely be back. Booty Negro, Little Brother, Never Next. Yeah. Hey.